Are you guys ready for the new year? I'm Frank Valtierrez and I typically I show you how to build food trucks from scratch and that's what all my video series have been about. So if you want to know how to build a food truck and get your business started in this next year coming up, maybe you have a special family recipe that you want to share with the world. Hey, it's all about uh, that food truck life because they're easy to build, easy to maintain, overhead is minimal and you can get on the road anywhere that you want. So that's typically what I show you what to do. But I did do this DIY series. I built this built-in breakfast uh, bench right here and I actually used YouTube as well to be able to help me build this so thank you YouTube because you helped me build this breakfast bench I did a part one where I kind of started you know cutting the framing and all that fun stuff and then now I'm going to show you where I got these trim pieces the paint I didn't do the paint a local painter did it here in Chicago and then I became a hinge expert because I installed these bad boys right back here so you can smash your fingers sometimes so again I'm Frank Baltieres let's get started on this part two so this right here that I'm using is pre-finished birch and I found it in Menards. It's about $75 a sheet somewhere around there. And these are used there for the, like the walls. You don't need three quarter yet. So I use this half inch right there. I'm, I'm assuming you can probably use something else, but this birch worked out really nice. And then here's the other side, cutting, cutting away. I use my jigsaw, as you guys can see, I'm cutting inside. A couple of reasons why, one, because it was November. So I think October, November, so it was, it got it gets really dark outside out here in Chicago at like three o'clock. So I didn't want to cut outside and it was raining and all this fun stuff. So it is what you see me working inside the house. I really don't have anybody to tell me, hey, you're getting the house dirty. So uh, I got the house dirty and it was a mess. I had to clean it up every single time. I'm a perfectionist, so it took a while for me to get this right. You know, if it was off by like an eighth of an inch, I'm there like, no, it has to fit perfect. Those right there, these little screws that you see me using, those are trim head screws, number eight, uh, inch and a quarter. And they come with a little uh, tip on there so you can use it. Uh, I use a little pilot drill bit first so it wouldn't split the wood. And then I used it on there as I, you guys. So I installed this hinge right here temporarily. I'm just kind of messing around with this. I really don't know what I'm doing. Let me zoom out a little bit so you guys can see it. Uh, this I found on Amazon. I'll link it in the description. I'll probably link it as a paid Amazon affiliate link. So I do get a little sliver of uh, compensation when you guys buy it using my links, just so you guys know and know are you guys aware of such a thing. But this one, it looks pretty sturdy. It's pretty thick, nice thick metal on here. I'm trying to find out how to open this door. There's a little, obviously a little piece of scrap plywood that I found. I do not know how to install this because if we do it like this, then you're gonna be able to see that hinge a little bit back there. But I can always put like a little piece of trim, as you see there as well. So I'm trying to figure this out. Really do not know what I'm doing. That's kind of like the DIY mystery. But again, I'm Frank Baltieres working on this bench. And I'm trying to find out how to do this door. This one right here, this is a three-quarter inch pre-finished birch from Menards again. And this one's going to be for the top where you actually sit. So it's going to be holding up all the weight. And I actually started using the jigsaw. But as you see later in a couple of the other clips, I switched it from the jigsaw to something that cuts a lot straighter because this thing was crooked. And it was probably me just with my wiggly hand that I have there. So let's get started and let's keep going to the next part. Took a little Home Depot run to get the trim for the base so it can kind of match the house. This is five inch trim, the floor trim that I have in my house. So I just wanted to kind of blend in. So it looks really built in. <laughs> I guess that's the goal, right? So here I am using the handy dandy cut your measurement whatever you need and then we're going to take it and get it paid for we had to pull out the good old miter saw to cut on an angle that way we get these corner pieces because they're not always going to fit exactly 90 so to be able to make a nice fit somebody had told me this little trick that right there that little coping saw i found this in Menar uh, sorry on amazon and this is a lifesaver so it makes that corner fit beautifully and then very minimal caulking is needed when it's time to finish and paint it white. Now this is a very important part. Remember earlier I was playing around with that hinge trying to figure out how to make the door work with the hinges. This is exactly what they told me I needed. I needed to build almost like a frame the entire perimeter around from the front to the back. That way I have something to attach the lid to with the hinges. Very important part right here. This is a one by that I found in Menards that's pre-finished and this is exactly what holds the hinges and the door. So to cut and rip, they call it ripping this piece of plywood. I'm using my circular saw right there, right next to my electric scooter. And I put this 
piece right here, I put some clamps on here just so I can get a nice, real clean cut because the original one, number one, it was too big. And secondly, if you guys can see, it's a little wavy. I tried to cut it with that jigsaw right there and it didn't work very well. Obviously, you can tell just by the result of that cut. So with the circular saw and putting this and moving it around gives it a much cleaner rip. That way I cut it perfectly to size to fit right in here because that's gonna be the bench lid. And what I did here, uh, and to be honest, I really don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I saw this from my original YouTube that I first saw. I put this border around here. I put this one by three. That way I can put the hinges on here. First time putting hinges on something for sure. So I'm gonna put half the lid right there and then this other piece right here. So that's how it's gonna look. Hopefully it turns out okay. Let's keep working. When I tell you I made a mess in my house, <laughs> I'm telling you I made a mess Woo! in my house. Look at that dust flying all over the place. I still found dust like a week later, taking my vacuum here, trying to keep it somewhat, you know, presentable if somebody were to come. Not too bad. Look at this. I put the piece of wood that I cut with that circular saw. Definitely made a mess in my house. Look at that. And I already vacuumed some of it up. Um, but we have the thing on here, the lid, the hinges right there looking pretty nice looking pretty nice this is gonna get covered up with some trim piece right there so that'll be done pretty soon but this lid does not look too bad it gives me a nice little lip that way we can lift it up so we can do this oh there it is so that's how it's gonna look something like that now we get into the nitty-gritty we're gonna be attaching the actual hinges on here as I mentioned I found these on Amazon the quality of these hinges in comparison to the ones you find at Home Depot night and day so definitely recommend these from amazon and you can cut them to length this right here again is going to be one of the tops i'm just arranging here my little clampy thing so i can attach so i can cut it with the circular saw that you see there so i'm just getting my measurements making sure that it's clamped and i had to use that little piece of wood that you see there on the right just because this uh, piece of metal is not long enough to fit from one side to the other and uh, let's uh, as they say kick the dust up again and now we're going to move it to the other side bang bang boom but this provided such a nice clean cut in comparison to that jigsaw that i was using earlier so definitely recommend a circular saw and obviously if you can cut it outside cut it outside so now i was trying to bring the boards over make sure that the tops fit exactly how you want them and give it a dry fit and what i did notice on here is you're going to see me sit down right now and there's a bow right there in the middle i was you know testing it out obviously that's the whole point of this make sure you test it out before you actually have people sitting on it all the time. And what I found out is that it needed another piece of support right in the middle. And I'm gonna be adding a piece of two by four that you see right here. That way it gets that support needed. So when people sit down, this bench will not like cave in and all of a sudden they end up on the floor or something like that. That would be embarrassing. They'd be like, who did this bench? <laughs> so I'm gonna fix that right now. And then you're gonna see the end result right here. There it is right there. Now we're gonna bring the top and make sure that it actually can hold up without bowing down bending down and we don't have any issues with this top right here so sit down frank and let's see if uh, you actually did it correctly i think i finally did it guys first i gotta clean up though look at this again mess number two got the jigsaw the circular saw the saw right there i think they call it a miter saw is that what it's called compound miter saw but i think i got it done i'm gonna take an after picture right now but i built this little shoe cubby hole because I want to put my shoes right in here, like that. That's what the purpose of that is. I might put a shelf, not sure yet. I haven't secured the tops yet, but that's kind of how it looks. I'm going to put a little shoe at the bottom, cover that up, cover that corner up. But ultimately, I would say it's 90 per... No, actually, I'm lying because I still got to paint it. <laughs> if you guys want to help me paint, help me paint, please. And now it's the fun part. Cleanup time. Not too many times in your life can you say the following. Take out the leaf blower and clean your house to dust it. So that's what we're doing here. Take out the leaf blower, making sure we get as much dust as we can. Again, do it outside if you can, because I couldn't. Just a couple more things here and we are complete. This actually was a very cool project. It took a while, not, not terribly long. The only reason that I built it was for two reasons. One, I wanted the extra storage underneath. That way I can put like my waters in there, maybe my electric scooter, um, maybe myself if I'm trying to hide and hide and go seek. But Right now we're just attaching the shoe and the base. And then this right here is actually called edge banding. I found it on Amazon. Actually a carpenter told me that I should add this to the exposed plywood edges 
That way you don't get that ugly grain look from the plywood. And all it is is you take the iron and it already has glue on here. I found it on Amazon and it's pretty easy to use. You just got to make sure you use a real, you can either use an edge cutter, edge banding cutter or a razor knife and then just cut the edges because it's going to be a little bit wider than the wood. And then when it comes to putting it, when you're going to paint it, make sure you give it a real nice sand. That's the only issue that I found is when it came to painting it, if you don't sand it correctly, you're going to have some ugly bumps on there. So make sure you sand it correctly and it should be no problem. But the edge banding is perfect. So this is the end right here. Hopefully this helped you out as you're building your DIY bench as an idea. The last part is the doors or the lids. I had to use my daughter to help hold it up. That way I can attach it with the screws underneath. Obviously you can see it's painted now. You just might have to make some small adjustments to the left, to the right. That way the doors close perfectly. I did not add soft closed hinges. That's the only thing that I did not add. Other than that, I love this thing. Beautiful.